This is a podcast about the hardcore community. Made by and for those who live authentic lives and embrace hard truths. We archive the stories of the bands and people who make this lifestyle possible. I'm Josh Lyon. And I'm Greg Benoit. And this is the Hardcore Archive Podcast. All right, so today on the podcast, we have Sarah Miller, who runs the video archive Always Late, Never Lost on Instagram and YouTube. And if you don't know her work from social media, then you probably know her as the videographer who can be found at basically any show in Western New York with the old school VHS camera setup. Uh, We'll spend some time talking about her setup and the process that she uses in a little bit. Um, But first, let's kind of jump in with the basic background questions. Um, who are you and where are you from? Uh, well, I'm Sarah Miller. Um, I grew up in Auburn, New York, and uh, I spent a long time in Syracuse. Um, I was in Brooklyn for a bit, Colorado for a little a year or so, and then I came back here. Um, well, COVID time was confusing to me, so I think it's been three years um, that I've been back in Syracuse. I think so. So you you were in Colorado and then you came back to New York in like 2020. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I think um, so. Yeah. So it was a year before COVID hit. I think. Um, yeah. So I uh, again, I was grew up in Auburn. Uh, lived in Syracuse for a while. Uh, was in Brooklyn. Uh, I can't. I went across country and ended up in Colorado for a year and then. Um, came back here and yeah that's when this all started <laughs> so how, how did you get into like going to hardcore shows did you start going when you were in in auburn or is that something you picked up through your travels oh no um i started going to shows in like high school and you know uh and then um which is a while ago and uh you know, so I, I went to I went to some shows and um, I lived in Auburn and then I moved to Syracuse. Um, my one friend Jessica, who had had brought me to shows and stuff like that, um, I moved in with her, and uh, you know we kind of had this house and um, with a bunch of people and you know like there's just hardcore shows going on and it, that was where everything really kind of changed for that and I became like you know all the hardcore straight edge vegan scene and all that stuff um like any shows yeah. from that era of your life that stand out as like ones that really hooked you like oh after you went to that show you were like oh I'm in I'm in this you know for good now this is like the scene for me you know I I have to say I I was thinking about this um it wasn't any show in particular it was I mean, a forefront of my mind is Lost Horizon. Going there and having that be like almost like a shock value coming from Auburn and and you know being, you know, just not aware of any of that stuff. And it, you know, you you went in and it was like, hmm, okay. Lost Horizon back. I mean, it's it's always you know kind of gross, but like you know, this is like sweaty and it just everyone is just it it was so uh just different it was so different and I um yeah I think once I moved here it just became normal it was like there's this show this show and you just we just all went um yeah I guess that was the changer (laughs) (laughs) yeah Lost Horizons are a really cool place Uh, um you know since we've known each other on social media for a while you probably noticed that I like to archive and post like old show flyers and the history for lost horizon goes back so far it's really cool that syracuse has a venue that has been consistently in use for as long as the lost horizon has there's like so much history in that place and at least for me um you know i like learning about the history and thinking about the old bands it's fun to go to a show there and think about you know what bands played there in like 1992 or something yeah yeah i was there in the later 90s um but it was yeah it was a whole nother world you know you went there and everyone was just like it's hard to explain I think um it was a step away from the world you walked in there and you felt like you were in just in a whole nother thing and you know it, it's probably in some 
I, I would no, I would say in some same similar waves of like hardcore now is like you go in there may be people you're just like ah, yeah, whatever or like there may be some kind of drama or there may be something but like all in all you walk in there and you are there and the rest of the world is outside of you and you know like you all are you get it if that yeah that uh, makes sense that's uh kind of like my escape from the rest of my life is is hardcore and kind of always has been um you know since i got into it as a teenager in high school um so i totally get that yeah um so i wanted to kind of jump into the main thing about um this interview which is kind of you your your unique setup and the whole system you've got going um before i really knew you i would joke and be like oh there's that time traveler who came here from 1989 to like document the future of the hardcore scene and then goes back to like you know report to you know i don't know ray capo as a teenager or something um <laughs> so as i alluded to those of the the listeners who don't know your instagram uh and your youtube um you know should definitely check out uh always late never lost on instagram and then um, you can follow the links out to youtube um you've got a really cool uh kind of hobby going where you um, well, I guess I'll, I'll let you kind of give your spiel about uh, uh, kind of your setup, what you do. Um, yeah, uh, basically what I do, well, I would say what I do and what I put into a thing is um, I, I go to all the shows that I can and it, it's a, it's a certain variety hardcore punk you know like it, it, it can vary right. the way metal shows screamer shows like it, it, there's it's it's more rounded but it's also within a certain realm um and i basically go go to every single one that i can you know every band that plays is important and uh the people there are important and um once i started doing this i just the fact that it, it is so important to so many people is um, why I want all of it. <laughs> and so I just go and, you know, I, I think that, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I wonder if it's confusing for people because I am st staring over like a big camera. And some people think it's like a modern camera, which is, you know, a weird thing. Like I have to explain, like, no, this is a full-size VHS tape. You know, people think that it's like some kind of news camera equipment or something. And I'm just like, no, it's not that. But um, yeah, I I, I want to go to as many shows as I can. And it, you know, because of being here, I have this great opportunity of having living in Syracuse. Is this is you wouldn't think it's such a central location to so many things, but I am it within, you know, a, a decent distance to Rochester, Buffalo, Albany, Binghamton, um, you know, I filmed in, you know, Poughkeepsie. Um, it's kind of, it, I've stayed within this area, um, but there's so much. <laughs> it gets to be so much that I like film some weeks, you know, like five shows in a week. And, you know, I just am going, going, going. And, um, all of it matters for me it's so important because it's on film and once i go and i record and i catch the, like the candidness of the things that are going and you know it's not like a and i would never think one's you know better than the other i just like what i care about but like you know it's not edited and there's a lot of moments where you're just like all right great i'm just staring at the wall or somebody's back for <laughs> you know 30 seconds but that's just really what it is it's just that's what it like that like I call it like first person perspective like I I want people to watch it well okay so my whole ideal thing would be that everyone would just watch it on VHS because that was my goal from the beginning is like <laughs> you can only experience what it truly feels like and looks like when you watch it on VHS well, it is I think that filmed think... to the TV that's like what appeals to me about it because i remember going to shows in like the late 90s and buying like bootleg tapes of live performances from distros and mm -hmm. like for me sometimes that was the first time i'd get to like find out about a band um and that was just like such an important thing that's kind of lost now um how did you like 
uh, you know, was did you have that nostalgia um, kind of for that era? And is that what motivated you? Or was it, you know, like, why why do the VHS? Why not do like a digital camera or even like a like a like a high end smartphone or something? To be honest, completely honest, it's not nostalgia for me. I um I when I did move back from Colorado, I just got a VHS player because I didn't have, you know, whatever set up. And I just started collecting VHS and just watched this all I watched, you know, like I don't have um I have internet, you know, but I don't watch stuff on my computer. I and I don't like do cable or anything like that. I know not like, oh, I don't, but it's just, that's just, it's what I like. So it makes me happy. So um, I just kept getting more and more and more tapes. And so I just watched tapes all the time. And I think from watching them and watching the way that they are filmed and what they make people feel, you know, there's like the random moments of pauses. And um, obviously it's all, you know, planned out on VHS the same as it would be for movies, but it's just different. And I, um, Oh, I, as a result of collecting VHS was like, I, I want a camera to be part of that. And then once I got the camera, <laughs> I like, yeah. Was was there like a, is it like a particular camera? You're like, no, I need to have like a Panasonic ZX30 or something. Or was that just like the first one you came across? So you're like, this is it for me. I, um, hmm. No, there's not a specific camera. I've gone through a few. Um, sometimes they get broken because I stand where I stand. And um, there's actually a little film of me in Binghamton. Um, the end it was, but it was a Death Before Dishonor show. And there was like, you know, I'm not sure. It's funny because you can hear the audio of someone apologizing. They're like, oh, sorry, I hit you. And I'm like, no, no, the moments are more important than the camera. You know, you walk away with the tape. You know, they're not all re really all replaceable, but like it's, you know, that's that's the important part is capturing that. And it's on, like I said, it's on film and it just lives there forever. Um, so like then you keep the tapes around because that was the, one of my other questions was kind of more of the technical aspect, like marrying the kind of old school VHS to the, um, you know, modern social media. Um, mm -hmm. Are VHS tapes even still like made or are those like hard to come by? You know, it depends. I think that you can get lucky. There's people that are like, oh, you know, I've got a bunch. Grab them for whatever. And then there's people who, I would say there's a lot of people. If you're like, if you're going on eBay or, you know, whatever, um, people think that they're worth a lot because they're old. And, you know, they're worth a lot of people where it means you know, special things, but as for, all in all, like, you know, people try and sell these tapes for, you know, a certain amount of money. And yeah, I'll, you know, like I will spend like $25 on a movie that I'm just like, I want this. Yes, sure. But it's something I'm going to watch, but yeah, I, I think it varies. I don't think that it's incredible, uh, like incredibly like elusive or hard to find um, or expensive. Um, I just think that for me, it's something very consistent that I am constantly looking and the more, obviously the more you look, the more, you know, and like now, <laughs> you know, I'm at a point where I'm like, what's the length of the tape? You know, I, um, you know, I've started dubbing tapes, which was, is for me the happiest thing because I did not want to start a YouTube. I actually told a lot of people because I didn't start filming to film for bands or for anything. I just, it was, it just happened that way. And, and, um, so I, I really was kind of resistant at first because I was like, no, you can't see it unless you see it on VHS because that's the only way it looks true. And because, you know, I started filming so many bands and so many people were asking, I didn't want to take that away from them and be like, no, you, you know, I'm like, it's free. I'll give you a tape. Just tell me what you want. I'm not, I don't, I'm not here. I don't, I don't make any money. It's very, I don't make money off of YouTube. It's not, this has zero part of my goal. Um, but I do want to get like the VHS in the hands of people so they can truly watch again, you know, 
the, I don't know if it's the last of the film era, but I just think it's so beautiful that it's filmed. And when you watch it, there's things that your eyes and ears and brain catches that you cannot catch from digital. So that's part of the reason why I was really resistant about doing a YouTube. Uh, but I also, I, don't know, I, I started feeling like it was a nice thing. People wanted to see what I filmed. They, people started being like, yo, you filmed my show. And, you know, and getting excited about it, which you know, yeah, I, I noticed that. Um, that, that uh that band for Potsdam Sunflower has like yeah. used uh some footage that you shot of them in like a bunch yeah. of promotional stuff that they put out, um, which is kind of yeah, cool. I shot all of it. I shot all of that for them. Yeah, they actually had asked me to. So um yeah, I I did all of the the video for for that. Um and that was really cool. I mean they're they're cool guys when we are the, are the other, but like, um, yeah, it was a nice thing to have. <laughs> yeah, it was in an on way of like being like, okay, maybe not the same track, but I have a really big, um, I'm gonna call it pet peeve or something with VHS filters, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So it's kind of, it's not like a big thing, but it's pretty common. People like do the regular videos and they flash yeah. the like, you know, like thing in the corner or they'll do like a little fuzz or like a click or whatever it may be, but it's a filter. And it doesn't make me like angry or anything like, but it makes me like like sad. Like, no, 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 this could be what it could be. And it's Yeah, those those like filters don't fool me because I like grew up watching VHS and and I know like what it looks like when there's like a tear in the image or you know, the you know, the 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 image doesn't quite look right on tv um it does not look the same as the like instagram vhs filters you can like mm -hmm. download um so like I when you appreciate the fact though that people do want that they want to see that so that i think is encouraging like again with you go back with, to the sun floor like they had me film it and you know there's obviously an interest if there's filters and there's stuff that people are putting on their stuff there's an interest to it and that's great gear it towards the original <laughs> so do you have like a vhs set up to the, like the computer hooked up using like uh, i know like there's some products that like uh, a company like elgato makes um do you use something yes. like that to convert it or do you have like an even more elaborate setup than that i don't do elaborate again i didn't want to start these i actually didn't really all in all i didn't expect people to watch this i just went because i'm like i love vhs and the first show that i had filmed um, which is, you know, significant to me. It was like, this is uh, like, I want, I want to keep doing this. Like, it just, um, but so, yeah, I, I, again, and I don't do a very um, extensive technical aspect. I just convert it. And now at this point, you know, I do see the, the little marks of the digit, like digit, digitization you know like within my videos uh, but it doesn't take away from the feeling of it and what it is and now I feel like it, at this point I really am starting to like think that's a really cool aesthetic to have the real true VHS moments happening it's recorded that way and then when it's converted to YouTube it's not going to be the same and I don't want it to, you know, like I said, if, if you like, that's why I'm, I'm so excited to be able to like start selling like the dubs. That's when I say selling them. They're $10, I'm not selling like anything crazy, but like just getting them in the hands of people, you know, like, um, yeah. Do, do you have like it, a, do you do those just like in person at the shows or do you have like a website that you can, people can go over to like buy those at? I don't, um, some people have asked me to do Etsy or suggested that right now, I, I, maybe it's a slow transition, but I feel so, I, I mean, I've been doing this for, you know, just a bit over a year. I haven't, it hasn't been very long at all. So seeing things kind of come full circle where what I wanted to originally is see people watching this on VHS and then, you know, through the whole yeah, yeah, everything that I filmed and, and, you know, YouTube and, and, you know, my Instagram and 
just be people being able to see what it is that's happening now you know it's come to a point where like now I you know I started bringing my dubs to shows and all right you know, it doesn't sound bad I can't say that but you know like, watching the excitement of people flipping through them you know just like, as, like in the same way of records being like oh that's a show I missed that one or like I want this one like you know like there's a, such a level of excitement of people picking up an actual physical VHS tape and being excited to be like I wanted to be there I was there or this is my band it to me that's that's everything that I had wanted <laughs> yeah I, it's um I work at a public library and we have something called the maker's okay. lab in the library um where we have like um uh, uh we have like a 3d printer and something called a Glowforge and all this fabrication equipment but one of the most popular things that we have that people can sign up to use is digitization equipment for people to mm -hmm. digitize their old home vhs super yeah. eight uh things like that mm -hmm. um so i started getting into like collecting old tapes from like the 90s uh from people just i know to digitize them so that people can yes. kind of relive those uh so i have a few of those coming for our instagram um that oh, awesome. jeff from uh, marathon and stand fast mm -hmm. uh, let me borrow and i'm kind of working my way through it's kind of a slow process for me um but that's part of the reason what kind of interested me in your process, because it is a throwback in a way, but it's also something that I think um, like people shouldn't forget is a part of the culture of like hardcore punk um, that like at one point yeah. in time, there would be like five people at a show with like a setup like that. And you could have like a show from five different angles. In fact, I even think like hate five, six goes back and digitizes like old tapes that, you know, people send to him or something. I'm not sure. Hey, five, six much respect <laughs> but um yeah I guess I you know I, I wish that I had been able to experience those times I I think that the shows I was at a lot of people were really into photography um and there was you know there were camcorders but I don't see um there being like different in oh no there is one All right, I knew I was going to do this. Uh, a friend of mine gave me um, a, a VHS recorded video from a specific venue that was set up from three angles. And uh, yeah, that was super cool. And it was awesome because the video is was actually sold from the venue. So it is like, that's where you, you got the video. It was like, you know, oh, we recorded this on VHS from three angles and um yeah, that was super cool. I think that's one of the first times I saw it actually happen on, on that. Um, so kind of wrapping things up, do you have any plans for like the future for 2023 for your social media and your your whole process? Um, so I um well my plan is to con well, yeah. My plan is to continue um filming as much as I can. And um, I have a um, I have an event coming up at the most. It's not scheduled yet, but it um, the most building um, in Syracuse. It's a like a science building, but they have a, a IMAX movie. So I have a film that I'm putting together, and uh, in March. In March, um, I'm gonna have a movie where I do like you know clips of bands, you know, and in Know, maybe like around an hour long something like that but it'll be like a event where people can like go and actually see it on on uh, a big screen which I think is cool um really I, I I don't know as far as future plans I really just want to have people be able to pick up a VHS tape and hold on to it and be like, this is special. Walk away with it, know that they have it in their house and know they can watch it at any time and it's going to be the same. And there's going to be all of the moments you don't catch with everything else. You know, like I truly do appreciate all of the, like the videography that goes on. And again, I've only been doing this for a year. <laughs> so like, even though I've, you know, been, you know, in, um like hardcore punk stuff for you know so long but um
there are a lot of moments that are captured in that. But for some reason, for me, when it's on VHS, it's 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 less aware or people don't know what to do with it. So people act silly, which is one of my favorite things. Yeah. Yeah, I think I've noticed that when you're like shooting crowd shots or something, it's like it's not the same as someone recording the show on their on their phone. Um, do yeah. you have like best uh, best sets or like a particular set that stands out as like a really good one that people should check out on your page? Hmm. You know, I've thought about this a lot lately. I think it's like the kind of year wraps up. Um, it's really, that's such a hard thing because of the, I film different genres. Like I do a lot of DIY punk shows, you know, and then I do community center hardcore shows. Um, it varies, although it's still within the same culture. It's, it, that's one of the things that I think is to me now nice in this uh, music scene is that you go to shows and there's punk kids, hardcore kids. It's 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 kind of back together, I think, where it should be because uh it doesn't have to be like separated into one or the other and i see a lot of people that are at all of the shows and stuff like that so um yeah i guess it it's tough for me because i do really like some of the diy shows because people are really they're really candid you know they're not being you know in a venue it's not like this I mean, there's a time frame. It's not super restricted. So, I don't know. People just feel like they're kind of... It, it does happen at the community centers, too, a lot, though. Um, all right. That is, I thought about this a lot prior to this. Um, as far as shows that I would like somebody to check out... It's really tough because I, I think that everyone finds what it is that they feel with the shows that they were at or the show. Like, like I was saying, when people like pick up the VHS tapes that I'm now bringing, they're like, oh, I was there. Yes, I, I can see this. I can see myself in it or I can see the bands or I can see the one I walked outside for. Or there's the like, this is my show. I can see in, in a lot of young bands. It's so cool to be like, you know, this is my show. I can watch it. And Oh, I don't know. I think it's also pretty cool. Like uh, some of the, let's say, bigger bands that I've been so lucky to be able to film. I think a lot of people like maybe couldn't make the show and are like, how was that? And they like, so I think that's also a cool thing to be able to check out like the show you wanted to be at. It, I think, isn't it? Is it my answer? The show that you would have wanted to be at. <laughs> you can look through. I mean, my, you know, my YouTube has all of them and um, I, I would encourage anybody, I guess, to if they um, had seen something that they would love to have on VHS or been like, oh, I was at that show, was that other band? You know, there's, there's, I, I do have um, a lot of bands I haven't gotten up yet um, just because of doing so many. Um, so I was like, I like when people reach out and are like, did you feel my band? Or, oh, I wanted to see that band. You know, did you, did you get them? Like, I'll, I want to post it up for people so they can see that. One thing you mentioned was kind of like mixed bills and um, like punk kids, hardcore kids, metal metal kids at uh at you know all at the same show. Um, and I've noticed that's you know there's always been crossover you know like since the beginning of time. Um, but I've noticed that happening more and more um, since like the pandemic kind of came to an end. Yeah. It seems like there were bands. Um, you know, putting together like mixed tours, which you didn't usually see. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think for me, that was like seeing like terror and dying fetus on a tour, which like it, it doesn't, yeah. it's, it's not like that doesn't make sense. You know, like those bands both appeal to me. Um, but one show recently that I saw you just put up and I was glad that it was up in time for this interview was the Chromag show at the bug jar. Mm -hmm. um, that show was pretty interesting because it was like, you know, as controversial as the Chromags um, uh, can be. That show was like a third hardcore kids, a third punks, a third metal heads. Um, and it yep. seemed to work really well. I, I heard they like came just like 30 shy of selling out, um, 30 tickets shy of selling out the bug jar. 
I was so, I was surprised that it wasn't sold out like from the get go. But but yeah, it was definitely really cool mixed, and everybody was so happy. You know, everyone was just like so like going and into it. That for me is when I'm filming, like I'm smiling behind the camera <laughs> because I can't help it because I'm just like I watch these people again from like you say like you know all different you know uh musical taste musical backgrounds ages all of that and I'm watching them and they're they're pure like investment and joy and, and the things that they're feeling while they're watching it and to me that's that's what I want to capture well that that show was like a good example of that because people seemed to get along and uh it yeah, really worked yes. well people were going off for for all the yeah. bands it was it was a good it was a good night um, so people should definitely go check out all the sets from uh, that you have from that show up on your uh, on your page. Um, to close things out, where can people go to find you on the web? Um, so my YouTube page is always late, never lost. Um, whenever I post, I post um, most shows on my Instagram, and I I put a link so that you can just like hit the link and go straight to that show. Um, also, I have the link just in my bio um, as far as it goes. So I think a lot of people see the bands that I post and, um, you know, I, 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 you know, a lot of people will go to the YouTube channel, um, and watch it, but, um, yeah, that's YouTube. My YouTube channel is where you can see everything. It's all of the stuff and then the vhs tapes are the ones where you see everything in between which i think is super special because at the end of the shows you know you watch people walk out you watch them talk to their friends you watch them be like yes you know like that those moments are like what we all feel and that's why we all go and that's why we do this and and it's consistent the happiness and excitement that people feel again ages you know, music genre, all of it, it's, it, that's a consistent thing that is just such a beautiful positivity, I think, in this world, and the music, and everything. All right, so everyone should definitely go follow uh, Always Late, Never Lost on Instagram, and check out the YouTube page. Any other final thoughts before we wrap up? Um, if you need a VCR, <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, I don't know, send me a message. I'll help. Sometimes people pick up the tape and they do. They're like, oh, I, I want to see this. They really, and I'm just like, let me help you. I want to help you figure it out. Because I think once you start watching stuff, you just, it, 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 you find out the true magic of the odd moment of time where film was in a plastic square that you could be able to put into something electric. So it's kind of cool. All right. Well, thanks for joining us uh, on the podcast. Um... Thank you so much for having me. Really the Hardcore great. Archive podcast is Josh Lyons and Greg Benoit with creative support from Rob Antonucci. This podcast is a product of the Rochester Hardcore community. Theme song provided by Stand Fast. Visit Hardcore Archive podcast on Linktree to listen to past episodes. Follow Hardcore Archive podcast and Enterprise Hardcore podcast on Instagram for updates. If you have an idea for an episode or would like to have your band's music featured during the closing credits, please contact us at hardcorearchivepodcast at gmail.com.